Welcome back, everybody, to Marriage Mondays, episode number three. Wow, it's hard to believe we're already on our third episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah, if you watched last week's, uh, so we uh, every week, every Monday, we do a video, and then we do a challenge at the end. And so uh, last week, we had on the power of the tongue and um, just the words that we speak and stuff like that. And then we had a challenge at the end to, uh, if there's challenges that come up, to yeah, not say anything negative. Like watch, watch what we speak and stuff. And so, and yeah, look, look for opportunities to speak positive. Yeah, but positivity. Yes, yes. And so yeah, that was also a good uh, a good dis discussion for us as well. And so yeah, we definitely learned from that topic as well. And yeah, it was very good for. It's us. like just being aware of like the words you're speaking. Amen. With doing that challenge, like it made me aware of what I was speaking and it made me realize like how often I do speak negative things without even being aware of it like it's just I feel like as humans our flesh negativity comes easier than positivity does yeah. and so often we don't yeah. even think about that and, right yeah it was definitely... and that's one of the one of the ways that Satan can keep us in bondage so this week's video we want to talk about um how God, like marriage was created by God. Um, it's marriage is God's design. And just we want to look at exactly what God's design is for marriage because we live in a world where everybody, yeah, it feels like marriage has just strayed so far from right. how God designed Desi it. Amen. And Amen. We just want to bring it back to. Yeah, just look at what God says about marriage and, and how think, he created it. Like, yeah, God created uh, marriage, and so the devil, he can't create anything, so he's going to try to pervert it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, just look at the world today, and, and I mean, the world says that um, one man or two men can marry, or well, women can marry together, mm -hmm. and that's not, yeah, that's not biblical. It's yeah. not the way that God intended it. And so, I mean, whatever Satan, he has to do to pervert it like he'll do like sex outside uh -huh. of marriage and just yeah different and so yeah it's it's amazing when you look at yeah the way that god created marriage it's like wow it's yeah. a it's a holy union and it's um it's pretty awesome it's a beautiful you, thing right? if it's within god's design amen amen we want to look at genesis 2 um verses 18 through the end of the chapter Genesis 2, uh, verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see that he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of a man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Hmm. I find it so interesting how, like, God sent each animal to Adam. He named every one, and not one of them was suitable for him. Right. Like, if, if you think about how many animals are in the world... <laughs> And not one was suitable. That in itself tells you just how, like, unique marriage is. Right. Yeah. And God specifically created two people to come together. Amen. Amen. And it's just like, Amen. wow. It's That's very powerful. Yeah. It's Amen. a beautiful thing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. You gotcha. I have to think of, like, here in verse 18 where it says, The Lord God said it is not good for man to be alone. Like, everything... After day one, day two, like at the end, it was like God saw what he had created and it was good. And mm -hmm. here's like, he sees, hey, it's not good for me. Yeah. Yeah. And not, there, there needs to be a solution. Like the animals were all in pairs. And so, yeah, he wanted a, yeah. a, a soulmate for, for, man, for Adam as well. God's creative work was not complete until he made woman. He could have made her from the dust of the ground as he made man. 
God chose, however, to make her from the man's flesh and bone. In so doing, he illustrated for us that in marriage, man and woman symbolically become one flesh. This is a mystical union of the couple's hearts and lives. Throughout the Bible, God treats this special partnership seriously. The goal in marriage should be more than friendship. It should be oneness. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I like the uh, the end of there, verse 24, and they became one flesh. It's like two people becoming one. Um, yeah, and I looked yeah. up the meaning of one flesh, and it says the spiritual and physical union of two people in marriage. Amen. It's Amen. basically you're you're not living... You still have your own personality, but you're not living as your own person. Like you're mm -hmm. living as two people or together yes. to Amen. as one. Amen. In the oneness of marriage, what one partner does and says to the other partner affects him or her as well. And like if we speak negative to our partner, like it's, it affects us as well. Like if we're, yeah, not being the husband or wife, like we're not going to be happy. <laughs> I mean, our marriage is not going to be good. Like yeah, that's if, true. if you're making your wife miserable, you're, you're miserable as well. There's no way. There's no way you can have a good marriage being, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't, never really thought of it that way. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good one. Yeah. God forms and equips men and women for various tasks, but all these tasks lead to the same goal, honoring God. Man gives life to woman. Woman gives life to the world. Each role carries exclusive privileges. There is no room for thinking that one sex is superior to the other. I feel like that's something, another thing that has been, um, especially from the culture that we come from, like it's so... The man is way higher than the woman, and the, the women woman are basically looked, treated as servants, or they're just on. yeah, they're just looked down on. And yes, there are different roles in marriage, but we're equally created yes, in God's amen, image. Amen. There's no yeah, I'm better than you or whatever. And and let me tell you, after uh, you, seeing you birth three children, like <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> like don't tell me the w woman can't do things i mean the w yeah you there's different roles or whatever but it's like yeah after seeing that it's like wow women are amazing that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> marriage is a gift from god and has three basic aspects the man leaves his parents and in a public act prom promises himself to his wife the man and woman are joined together by taking responsibility for each other's welfare and by loving each other above all others. The two become one flesh in intimacy and commitment of sexual union, which is reserved for marriage. And so, yeah, the man and woman are joined together and they look out for each other. Like, first we have to make sure that our, um, our relationship with God is uh, bigger bigger than our, uh, our love for our uh, husband and wife. Or if not, we can't, like, love them in the way that um, God intended it to. But then we also want hold their needs up higher than our own like look out for each other and yeah yeah be committed to caring for one another yeah i find it interesting how in verse 24 it says like because the woman was created like eve was created from adam's flesh and bones says then it goes to verse 24 and says this is why a man leaves his father and mother like saying that man needs to leave his father and mother like there again i feel like a lot of times in today's world like you you get married but sometimes the the parents you still like listen to your parents right. more you, than you do to your spouse yeah. or you might um tell like you're used to telling your parents things that are happening in your life and then you continue doing that instead of going to your spouse about it. And that can very quickly cause division in a marriage yeah. too. Yeah, there's that leaving, leaves his father and mother, yeah. It's you become like, your own become, family. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, hmm. No, you don't, yeah, you don't, you're not marrying your family. And I mean. Yeah. yeah not, <laughs> you have to make, leaving you have to make decisions for your own family and not sometimes you know you grow up doing things a certain way and then you come together and you might have grown up doing things differently from each other yeah. and so you have to figure out yeah 
like put those things aside and figure out what you're going to do for your own family yes and not yes. what's the think best? the way you grew up is the best way yeah right? what's the best god honoring like what what would god want us to do in our marriage like and yeah kind of leave the, yeah some of the the ways that you uh, grew up with you know you might yeah. have to set it aside and then going on to verse 25 both the man and his wife were naked yet felt no shame Adam and Eve were not embarrassed in their innocence, but after Adam and Eve sinned, shame and awkwardness followed, creating barriers between themselves and God. We often experience these same barriers in marriage. Ideally, a husband and wife have no barriers, feeling no embarrassment in exposing themselves to each other or to God. But like Adam and Eve, we put on fig leaves, a.k.a. barriers, because we have areas we don't want our spouse or God to know about. Then we hide just as Adam and Eve hid from God in marriage. Lack of spiritual, emotional, and intellectual intimacy usually precedes a breakdown of physical intimacy. In the same way, when we fail to expose our secret thoughts to God, even though he already knows, we break our lines of communication with him. So like, mm -hmm. the fact that they were both naked, yet felt no shame, it went farther than just like, not having any clothes on right like they were it was also they were f emotionally spiritually connected mm -hmm. and therefore what? they didn't feel any shame and then sin comes yeah once they uh, did what God told them not to like that sin separated from God and all of a sudden they were like ashamed of being naked and they had and to it cover probably up. also put barriers between them too. yeah yeah and so yeah. it's yeah I know like for us there was things that we didn't tell each other about our past until like the last two years or so. Yeah. And like looking back, I can see where it put barriers between us without even knowing it. Right. And just being completely open and honest about everything can just bring you so much closer together, together in the long run, even though right at the time it might, it might bring a little bit of hurt that one flesh aspect yeah like when there's no secrets no nothing you don't hide anything from each other you are also going to become closer to each other yes and it just deepens that one flesh in uh ephesians 5 22 it says wife submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the lord and then in ephesians 5 25 it says husbands love your wife just as christ left the church and so uh for the wife to submit to your husband is like something that um, husbands like to maybe, yeah, in, a, in an argument or whatever, like hus our wives submit and mm -hmm. just kind of to kind of end the argument or whatever. But if you're not doing what Christ said to love the church, uh, love your wife as he loved the church. And so Christ died for the church. And so if you're not loving your wife, there's really nothing there to submit to because you're not doing it in the way that um, God has called you to. And yeah. Something I found interesting that I never really thought about before is like, we're not just like us as wives, we're not just submitting to our husbands for our husband's sake, but because that is what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. We're doing it because we are in a relationship with God and we're primarily doing it for God. And when you, yeah, it just gave me a new perspective on it. Like, we're not just doing it for our spouse, but we're doing it because that's what God has called us to, um, to, to walk out in a Christian marriage. And when you walk out in that, like, that's when you will truly see the beauty of that, of how God intended marriage to be, too. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and I, I think as far as the leadership role um, that a husband is supposed to play, like, he is being a leader, whether he's not doing anything at all, or whether he's being a leader that uh, the spiritual leader that God has called him to be. Like, um, ultimately, like the family's going to suffer from it if he's not doing, yeah. if he's not doing how he's supposed to be. But that's the way, like God has, the husband is supposed to be the leader, and so if he's not doing, doing it uh, in a way that honors God, like it's going to hurt the whole family, and. Um, so yeah, it's like statistics show like if the uh, husband is a spiritual leader that he's called to be, like isn't it a way higher chance that the children will? Yeah, I and, think so. And some people like they find that offensive, like they think, well, then uh, 
the why, like you're saying, women can't do it as well, but that's the way like God has yeah, intended it's, it. It's, it's God's design. Yeah, it's God's design. And in saying that, we're not saying that the husband is better or anything. It's just that's the way yeah, that God it's, designed it's it. It's the, the role and, that God has. Yeah, that's the way that God designed marriage. And so, I mean, ultimately, it's biblical and I'm not going to go against the Bible. I'm, and we should. And ultimately, I feel like that's why Satan, he tries to uh, get, uh, get behind the man. And so he doesn't fulfill his uh his role like fulfill yeah. his leadership and so yeah that's i think that's why as men it's important that we make sure we're bringing spiritual leaders in our family for sure yeah and even like be aware that um when the husband when you are walking or walking out in the roles as god created it for like the husband being the spiritual leader the wife submitting like when you're walking in God's side is when the enemy is going to attack the hardest. Like marriage is such Satan hates marriage. <laughs> yeah, marriage is such a beautiful, like world-changing thing if you just think about it. Because children, like the family, is families are what wow. make the world. Amen. And Amen. if the, if, if Amen. families aren't Amen. If it's broken. walking in God's design, then the world is going to just be broken. Suffer. And Amen. Yeah. So Amen. it starts within the home. It starts Amen. within each home. Amen. And Satan knows that. So he's going to, Ooh. like, if you are aware that he's Amen. he's out to get marriages, then you can be on guard and you can come against him and not Amen. let him. It's just the fact of if you if you're blind to it, if you choose to just look the other way about it, that's when he's going to get a hold of you. But if you, yeah, if you're aware and then you can fight him. Just with like, with another thing with submission, um, like the word submit means to be under in rank. It's, it's a military word. And when um, the author was writing to the Ephesian church, they like they understood it, understood it in that way and i found that interesting because it's not like if you think about that in a military term there's different ranks yeah but there's still it doesn't mean one person is less than, less than, than the than other right. it's just the yeah, ranks it the, keeps order mm -hmm. it keeps everybody safe like if somebody steps out of their right. rank <laughs> there's going there could be death involved right. or whatever exactly. And exactly. that that can happen the same thing within family, like Amen. spiritually. If if you're not walking out in the order that God appointed, then there's room for yeah for Satan to come in and just take over. Amen, amen. And if like your uh, spouse isn't being the uh, spouse that God has called them to be, like don't fight your spouse. Like fight the enemy. Like yeah, exactly. I mean, help fight the enemy for him, like him or her, and like yeah. You're That's not the thing, like. As wives, you know we're not a le we're not the leader of the home, but we're we're created to be our husband's helpmeet. And one of the ways that we can come beside him and help him is praying, like fighting, like spiritually in prayer, fighting for our family, for Amen. our husband, and that can go a long way too. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Submission is rarely a problem in homes where both spouses have strong relationships with Christ and where each other each other work for the well-being and happiness of the other. A Christ-honoring husband will not take advantage or abuse his leadership role, and a Christ-centered wife will not try to undermine her husband's leadership. That's really good. That's mm -hmm. why we started, like, the first episode was about each having that personal relationship with God. Because yeah. when you have that, it just your marriage yeah. automatic like you also start making God the center of your marriage and it just everything yes. flows better as like as it was designed by God. Yes. Because God is the one that created it and yeah, if we the more we surrender to him the more yeah, it'll make our marriage better. Yeah, that's one thing like there's different things in the Bible that, you know, were specific to certain cultures when it was talked about you know, if you look at the context of the the book or whatever, like it was written to a specific church in a specific culture. But marriage is one thing. Yes, 
the whole Bible is God breathed and but marriage was in the beginning like it was from the beginning it was something that God created Amen. he designed it Amen. he had a special purpose and plan for it and so Hallelujah. it's just yeah when you can Hallelujah. walk in how God designed it it Amen. just it's a beautiful yeah it's just but it, I mean it's a day it's a daily process like you're you're never yeah. at the point like you, you never give up working for your marriage like it's exactly. every day every day just like your walk with Christ like never quit thirsting and hungry for righteousness and yeah it's just every it's like day. anything good that um you have in life you have to work for you have amen. to fight for amen it's not just going amen. to you're yes. not just going to sit back and have let this me sit back on the couch <laughs> let me sit back on the couch and eat chips no it don't work like that <laughs> put some work in it <laughs> yeah like make time for you and your spouse to just yeah whether it's time after the children go to bed or um yeah just having that time where you can discuss things and um just have that one-on-one -on -one time together because that will also just deepen that that one flesh the picture of like one being one flesh amen um our challenge for you this week is to um just put aside all barriers if there's a secret that you're keeping from your spouse or maybe there's something that you've been wanting to talk about but you just you've just been holding back like just take time to sit down and just talk about, um, yeah, if you have a secret, you know, something from your past or even something in your present, whatever it might be, like just sit down, have that conversation with your spouse um, and just give each other grace. Amen. Like do it Amen. in a kind, yes. loving way. Amen. Um, and if you're... If your spouse tells you something, you know, that they might have been keeping a secret or whatever, like... Um, yeah, it might be really hard to to not feel hurt or to not get angry. Um, but just, yeah, just see it as, just be grateful, I guess, that they are willing to to be open to you about it. And it can just deepen when there's when there's no absolutely no secrets. It can just deepen that trust Amen. Um, and closeness. Whatever, yeah, whatever the discussion is like, just think like, what would Jesus do? I mean, if. Yeah, and in, in your situation and whatever, and just yeah, try to mold that as good as you can. Yeah. So don't miss uh, next week's topic. <laughs> it's gonna be flaming hot. I think we're talking about intimacy. <laughs> yeah, we want to kind of we wanted to, you know, talk about God's design for marriage, and just how yeah that becoming one and feeling no shame with like being naked that. Yes, it's also like feeling no shame being naked. It includes intimacy. But when you start with being emotionally connected, spiritually connected, there's no secrets between you. Yeah, that, the intimacy to, yeah. is going to be like true. Um, how would you say it? Like true intimacy, the way that God created it. Like it's so beautiful. Yeah, having that emotional and spiritual connection will also make intimacy intimacy so much better in the mm -hmm. bedroom. And yeah, so we just want to challenge you to um, just, yeah, take time to talk about things. And even maybe if you haven't yet, start reading the Bible together, praying together. I know like for, for me, once once we started doing more of that, like, and connecting on a spiritual level, it also deepened my desire for physical intimacy. Yeah. And so, yeah, maybe that's what has been missing for you um, if you struggle with intimacy. So, yeah, we hope uh, this week's uh, video can be an encouragement. And, uh, yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of uh, marriage and the way that you've designed marriage. You, Lord, you're the creator of, the, of marriage. And Lord, we just come against the devil um, who works so hard again to uh, destroy marriages in any way that he can, uh, whatever way that he, he just, uh, the enemy is out to uh, steal, kill, and destroy. And Lord, we just come against the enemy in each and every marriage, whether it's a marriage that honors you or not, Lord, we just stand against each and every marriage that it can thrive in the way that you intended it. 
Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and love. And Lord, we just ask that um, through the grace and love that you have for um, each and every marriage, that in that they would see their whatever area that they need to work on, Lord, that would, they would turn to you in that grace and that they would just commit to um, to live out the marriage, um, their role in the marriage in the way that you have called them to so that it can be a beautiful, thriving picture of the way that you have designed marriage, Lord. Thank you for each and every marriage. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.